Hello, my name is Mr. A. Today, let's talk about geometry, area of irregular and odd polygons. For the area of irregular and odd polygons, there is no set formula that exists, at least not one that can cover any type of irregular polygon. For this example, we're going to follow these two steps. Step number one is to cut it into regular shapes, such as parallelograms and triangles. For a lot of shapes, they will give you certain measurements. For a few shapes, not necessarily all of them, there will be an easier place to cut than others. For example, with this shape, if I were to draw my line going vertically, like right here, I would be able to see some measurements, but I wouldn't necessarily be able to immediately find the area of both shapes. Versus if I drew my line horizontally from side to side right here, the way the measurements are written, I can already easily find the area of both the top rectangle and the bottom rectangle. For the top rectangle, we have 14 meters times 8 meters. Since 14 is exactly twice as much as 7, I could simply do 7 times 8, which will give me 56, and I can double it to get 112. Now that is just the area for this top rectangle. For the bottom rectangle, we have 6 meters by 8 meters. 6 times 8 will give me 48 meters squared. Step 2 is simply to combine and find the areas. We found the areas. When we combine them, we take 112 plus 48, which gives us an area of 160 meters squared. And that's our area. For irregular polygons, there is not too much more than this. Let's try one more example. For this example, we don't have quite enough information in order to immediately find the area of any shape that we can cut. For example, you could draw a horizontal line straight across to form two trapezoids. But of course the trapezoids are incomplete and we would still need a bit more information. Another way would be to draw a vertical line to separate our rectangle and triangle. Now right away we do have enough information to find the area of our rectangle. The rectangle has a base of 10 feet and it has a height of 8 feet. To find the area we will do 10 times 8 which gives us an area of 80 feet squared. This is just the rectangle. Our triangle we do have the base available to us, but what we don't know for sure is the height. The height is something we're going to have to find. The base is already given to us. We already have the height of this line right here. All you have to do is line it up to the other vertical line that it's drawn for the shape. That other vertical line is over here. This eight foot line lines up with this 8-foot line. Rectangles all have two identical lines. In this case, the top line and the bottom line are identical, and the left line and the right line are identical. So the base of this triangle, if I were to turn my paper, is going to be 8. The height of this triangle is a little bit harder to find. For the height of this triangle, 
we need to use this line off to the side. The height of the entire shape, rectangle and triangle combined, will be 15 feet. But the problem is, we already know and have already solved for the rectangle. This section down here takes up 10 feet. So what do we have to add to 10 in order to get 15? We have to add 5 feet. The height of this section up here is going to be 5 feet. That is the height of the triangle. Finally, we do have the base and have the height of the triangle. So we will follow our formula. Area equals base times height divided by 2 for a triangle. 8 times 5 will give me 40. 40 divided by 2 gives me an area of 20 feet squared. Finally, we have to combine the area of our triangle and the area of our rectangle. 20 feet plus 80 feet gives us a final answer of 100 feet squared. Let's take a look at a couple more examples before I let you go. We'll start with a problem that I assigned for my students for homework. Now this is just a tra regular trapezoid. It's just turned sideways, so it doesn't look quite like one of the examples from another problem. But it is a trapezoid. It has two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. So for this one, we're simply going to draw a diagonal line to form two triangles. A right triangle with a base of 10 and a height of 5, and and what appears to be an isosceles triangle that has a base of 10 and also has a height of 10. This dotted line is the same length as this solid line. So 10 times 5, which is 50, divided by 2 gives me an area of 25 yards squared. For this larger triangle up top, it has a base of 10 and a height of 10. So that will be 10 times 10, which is 100. 100 divided by 2 gives me an area of 50 feet squared. Combining our two areas gives us a total area of 75 yards squared. Let's take a look at the other example. For number 4, for the homework that I assigned. There is only one good place that you can really draw a line. While you could separate this into two vertical lines going down, an easier way would be to draw one horizontal line, which gives you a rectangle on the bottom and a square for the top. 80 times 20 will be 1,600 centimeters squared and 40 centimeters times 40 centimeters will also give me 1,600 centimeters squared. Combining the two amounts will give me 32,000 or 3,200 centimeters squared. Let's take a look at one more. This problem, number three, is a little bit easier than one, the second example that I gave. While we could draw a horizontal line to get two trapezoids, there is enough information already for us to draw a vertical line and find the area of this square and this triangle. The square has a base of 12 and a height of 12, which will give us an area of 144 centimeters squared. Our triangle has a base of 12 and it has a height of 6. So following our formula we will do 12 times 6 which is 72 
divided by 2 because it is a triangle gives us an area of 36 centimeters squared. Combining 144 and 36, we will have a total area of 180 centimeters squared. One final example before I cut, cut off. For this one, we have two places that we could cut it. We can cut it with a vertical line, but you will have to do some addition to find the height of this rectangle and some subtraction to find the width of this rectangle. So we will draw a horizontal line. In this case, we can see what the base and height of each shape are, is. The base of this shape is 16 and the height is 8. So doing 16 times 8 will give me an area of 128 meters squared and doing 8 times 8 will give me 64 meters squared. Combining those two amounts will give me 192 meters squared. Well, that's all for me today. I hope you found this video informative, and I'll see you later.